Hello, BookTube. It's Scott. And now, And we're Gunpowder Fiction and Plot, and we have a quiz. Yeah, we've done a bookish quiz before, but this time we're doing, for Victober, a Victorian bookish quiz. Um, Victober is run by some incredibly good channels, by Katie at Books and Things, by Lucy the Reader, and by Katie Howe. And is there a fourth? I don't one? know. I'm too busy drinking my... Your yeah, man tears. Oh, tastes like coffee. And if men really did cry, oh, you would be <laughs> punching them all day. You'd be just... There'd be so much violence. Your mother never loved you. <laughs> uh, your penis is tiny. Now let me lick your face as you cry. <laughs> that is... I think somebody's sexual fantasy. <laughs> your Look. penis is tiny and I'm licking your all face. Right. Um, that is a match made in heaven as long as he cries coffee. Okay, sorry. Um, We're doing a quiz. <laughs> it's got nothing it's to do with It's relatively it. sensible in comparison to that. Okay. All right. It is Victorian themed because we are in the middle of Victober. Or we're about to start Victober. I don't know because... No, we're scheduling. Whatever. Yeah. Victober, Victober, Victober. Let's mention it again. Um, anyway... Um, so there are six rounds. Each round is worth six points, except for the rounds that aren't. Uh, uh, and Scott's got odds, because he's odd, and I've got evens, because I'm awesome. Because you're a square. Yeah. That's not an insult. I don't think it is. No. Not in the bookish community. Who of you is not a square? Yeah, you all like reading books. Nerds. Um, anyway. Um... Round one is a really simple round. I'm going to name a book. You've got to write down an answer. Now, um, you can keep score however you want. Just tell us your score at the end of this. Don't lie. Nobody wins if you get 100%. You know, don't, don't Google it. If you get 100%, no. Yeah, no. Um, I was going to offer them some kind of bribery, but I can't even think what to give if them. If you get 100%, learn how to cry coffee. And then I'll love you. Uh, all right. So, the very first question is Alice in Wonderland. So, tell us the author. Now, do we like... What are we going to do in between questions while we give them a chance to think? You know, who did write Alice Last in time we talked rubbish and you did this thing with the Welsh scenery. Should we do Welsh singer or should we mix it? Should we do like Norwegian Forge? Forge? How do you pronounce no, it? No, if we're going to mix it up, we should go to the other place of my heritage. Latvia. Yes. Right. What does Latvia have? Um, farmland? Farmland. Latvian farmland coming to you. Uh, question two Who wrote Dracula? Yeah. Um,. I don't know how much babbling is appropriate in the in the meantime. Do you need silence to think, or thinking music? Shall I just like name Victorian authors that didn't write Dracula to confuse you? Was we'll it count six, eight, four, Holmes. three? Inspector Moss. One hundred and two. Mm. Who wrote Agnes Grey? Mm. Person. They were human. Yeah, that is a hint. It wasn't a dog. Can you imagine what book Brittany would write? Yeah. <laughs> I went to the park. It was the best day ever. I, like, jumped on a dog that was huge. <laughs> it was so good. Then I found some bird shit and I ate it. <laughs> uh... And also, he would think that everyone, everyone he ran up to would be like, and they loved me, even if they didn't. And they gave me a treat. Question four. Who wrote Adam Bede? Yeah. So, Latvian farms. Do Latvians farm vegetables or animals? I know. I think, I think my family farms strawberries. So, you're descended from Latvian strawberry farmers... And I'm a green grocer. You should get a family discount for importing them. <laughs> Can you imagine how shit they'd be by the time they got here? Yeah, because could they go? They'd come on shipping container. <laughs> Latvian strawberries, are three months old. Mm, gross. 
<laughs> Question five. Who wrote The Woman in White? It tastes like man tears. Mm. Actual man tears. Did you cry on my cup? No, but I got confused with the sugar and the salt. Would have noticed that before then. Yeah, no, it was definitely the pepper. Question number six. Who wrote The Last Chronicles of Barset? The last ones. The last ones. Not the first ones. Not the first ones. No, I think the first one's called The Warden. That's Is a that a clue? I think Ooh, so. Ooh, you got one out of him, you tricksy yeah, but trickers. It's, it's kind of like this well-known book was written by the same author that wrote this not very well-known book. You never know what triggers someone's little brain. You don't. All right, that is round one. We'll do the answers at the very end, won't we? Yeah, we'll do the answers at the end. Good. Round two. Round two is a return of the famous cake round from our first bookish quiz. So I have made some beautiful book covers. Uh, I've got them, and I've covered the important information, the telltale information, with cupcakes. So you can't see them. So you have to tell me what books these book covers are, and you get a bonus point if you know... So a point for the title and a point for the author. So there's six covers, potential of 12 points for this round. <gasps> 12 points. I told you, six points per round except for the ones that aren't. Yeah, which are usually mine. <laughs> Um, so this is cover number one. You took my cheat sheet away. <laughs> how, <laughs> that's the questions for later rounds. How am I not going to know what book cover comes next? This is book cover number two. This is a Norwegian fraud. <laughs> book cover number three. Boop, boop. <laughs> Do you know how hard it is to get the book covers in your hand? <laughs> into my hand. Especially hands. when you do like this. Yeah. <laughs> They're not, you're not straight on the, the TV. You're very diagonal. Book cover number, what are we up to? Four. 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 Anyone doing jazz hands? Number five. Still alive. No disassemble. No disassemble. And book number number six. That was a turbo round because we had to make up time because we spoke too much crap in the first round. Well, I figure you were just like... I'll, I'll just slow us down again in this third round because... That's what you do! All right, round three. It's just like general Victorian book trivia. Ooh. This is all like book questions, specifically like plot sort of... or characters or something. Name the book where a drunk Michael Henchard sells his wife. What a prick! What a prick sells his wife. <laughs> not not prostitutes her, just, just like sells, sells her. her. Like a cup. Yeah, yeah. Like, I've run out of beer, I cannot pawn my coat, it's winter, I know, I'll get rid of my wife. Uh, how much do you think I'd get for you? Me? You're very tall and you can lift things. And I'm bone idle. You also kill spiders very well. No, you vacuum and you do dishes. I think I'd get good money for you. I'm flatulent. You are very flatulent. I snore. That, that, both of those things would definitely cut the price down. I don't listen to other people. No, you don't. But that's a good reason to sell you. <laughs> Question number two. Basil and Henry are the friends of which Victorian anti-hero? Anti-hero. Anti-hero. Is that another word for asshole? Could be. Mm -hmm. Really depends how you analyse the book. That might be a spoiler, though. Right. Can you hear the dog snore? He's settled down now. He's having a snore -thon. Question number three. What Dickens historical fiction is set in the French Civil War? 
that, I think that really should say. Question number three. What Dickens historical fiction was set in the French Revolution? That sounds more appropriate. Yeah. Oh, did you hear my knee from there? No. It was really loud and crunchy. I should get a new one. Yeah, I will when I sell my husband. Genuine human or pig? Um, genuine human. Yeah, I think so. Who are you sell me to? There are women who would definitely buy you. You are six foot four and kill spiders. And you cook. And you do dishes. Basically any woman who's married to a shit man would buy you. I don't think I cook very often or do dishes very often. Only when you cook. I'm just trying to, like, get your price down. If you get to, like, sell me. Oh. Yeah. No, I'll talk you up. <laughs> you talk me up. I'll get a good price. I can sell. <laughs> you can sell. I make my living selling carrots. Two for five. <laughs> I don't have two of you. <laughs> Can't do a special. Throw in the dog. This is my last one. Get him while he's fresh. Question number four. Amelia Sedley is a character in which novel? The long one. It is a long novel. I'll give you that. It's a long novel. Long... You gave them a clue. Did you know the answer? Like your notes? My nose is not long. It's longer than mine. Yeah, that's because you've got a dwarf nose. It's not a dwarf nose, it's a cute nose. Question number five. Mr. Earnshaw, Mr. Lockwood, and Nellie Dean are all characters in which novel? Which one? You just tried to trick me then. Which one? I'm not, it just, look, look, there it is in my terrible handwriting. <laughs> Read that. How are you going to read your own answers? <laughs> to be honest, it's not even clear what alphabet I'm using to write that. <laughs> I'm scared because he wrote out some of my questions too. Now I'm going to have to have a look. I did use my third best handwriting on you instead of my straight to the bin handwriting. What? All right. I'll just, I'll just, <laughs> it says fox hunting now. Oh, it does. Okay. Um, question number six. Which collection of short stories includes the character Ricky Tiki Tarby? That's the end of my round now. That's round three done. Round three is done. Halfway. 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 Get a beer. Mm, and some nuts. Yeah. Peanuts. Or hazelnuts. Or a cup of tea, if that's what fancies you tickle. Or some potatoes cut very thinly deep fried with some sort of flavoured salt on them. Crisps. Yeah, there's like translation issues. A Euro translation issue. In Australia if you say chips it could mean crisps or it could mean fish and chips. 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 French fries. But if you say crisps we all know what you mean but nobody uses that word. Except for Janelle. Yeah. Because she doesn't want to get your hopes up. No, if crisps are coming and you're expecting hot chippies, then you're going to be really sad. So, this round, I'm going to give you all the answers. And all some of them. decoy answers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you're going to have, I think, nine options. And then I'm going to give you six quotes with a missing word. You've got to decide... Which of the answers match which quote? Are we telling them where the quotes come from? These are all quotes that have been said by Queen Victoria. That's it's a Victorian quiz. Yeah. So our possible answers are cabbage, a dashend, fox hunting, babies, book, the true god, Suffragette, Artists, and Albert. And uh, they'll all appear somewhere on the screen. Over Scott's face. Yeah, Hopefully not. Uh, all right, so quote number one. So you have to fill in the blank. 
with one of those answers. Yeah, with one of those. Yeah, yeah. We're getting follow the bouncing ball. Excellent. Uh, number one, I don't dislike blank, though I think very young young ones are rather disgusting. Oh. Could be any of them. It could be. That's the point of the game. Number two. Jesus. I would venture to warn against too great intimacy with blank, as it is very seductive and a little dangerous. Because the handwriting's getting worse. It does actually improve, but this is definitely the low point. If there's any inaccuracy in these quotes, it's because of Scott's handwriting. And number three, nothing will turn a man's home into a castle more quickly and effectively than a blank. I do have a favourite one for that. A favourite answer? Mm. Like one that's actually not the answer? (laughs) Or one that is the answer? Uh, Just the answer that I prefer. Is it one of the options or have you just made a third one off? (laughs) One of the options. (laughs) There is definitely a best one. We'll discuss that when we get to the answers. <laughs> wait, wait. I think I've got a, I've got a great... Like, nothing will turn a man's home into a castle quicker and more efficiently than a moat. <laughs> <laughs> That's not an option. Uh, number four. England has become great and happy by the knowledge of blank. Number five, my dearest dear blank sat on a footstool by my side and his excessive love and affection gave my, me feelings of heavenly love and happiness I never could have hoped to have felt before. Exclamation mark. And number six, that blank accounts for the supremacy of England. Is it supreme? Like a pizza? You kind of want it. Tasty. Do other countries have a supreme pizza? Or is that... I feel like it's a Pizza Hut thing, the supreme. So All all the places have supreme pizzas now. Boring. All right. Back to the books for round number six. Five. E. Q. Round five. Scott's round. All right. I'm going to read you a quote. It's from a book. Tell me the book. Just one point for the book? Just one point for the book. I mean, book and author is just giving you a second point for free if you know the answer. All right. You get a second point for free if you know the author. See? See what I do for you? (laughs) It's, It's just giving you extra scores. I am no bird... And no net ensnares me. I am a free human being with an independent will. What Victorian novel does that come from? And I know it sounds like he said bean, like a bolotti bean, but he said bean. Okay. i just make it funnier. And do you know when I was in, like, very early primary school... One of my teachers had a lesson where she said, bean and bean are the words that sound the same. Like, they're spelt differently, but they sound the same. Homophones. Homophones. Yes. Um, And so, therefore, I've always just said, oh, good, I'm not going to bother. And then later in life, I've realised that's dumb, but I couldn't get out of the habit. That's why it sounds like Bellotti bean when I say human bean. Your teacher was a dunce. I know. Don't ever tell an inaccuracy to a child. They'll have a disability in older age. I don't know if that counts as a disability. You're not getting a pension for it. No, I'm not. That's the government's fault. Those bastards won't give you a placket so you can park it close. Let me start again. The books that the world calls immoral are books that show the world its own shame. Ooh. It's a good quote, isn't it? It's a... I dare say that person can write. Probably a book. Maybe. What's next? Question three. 
And of course, men know best about everything, except for what women know better. It's not really that controversial when you think about that. Yeah. It's just a it's statement like... of the possibilities. Yes. <laughs> well, if you, if you accept the gender binary. Yes. Which we don't. We don't. But maybe when it was written, they were less enlightened. I, mean, I don't know. Of course they were, because it was before today. Yeah. Question number four. A strong woman who recklessly throws away her strength. She is worse than a weak woman who has never had any strength to throw away. What a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Some of these quotes, I don't think are as good without the, like... The context of the character saying them. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. All right. All Quest left. All left. Question number backwards five. Do you know in the evolution of the letter five, it got turned back to front? Uh, why sometimes I believe as many as six impossible things before breakfast. Probably should have been question six. Yeah, but it's not. So it's five. Not, no. Right. And a last question for this round. Last and least. No, it's the longest quote. Oh. Loyalty and obedience to wisdom and justice are fine, but it is still finer to defy arbitrary power unjustly and cruelly, you, cruelly used, not on behalf of ourselves, but on behalf of others more helpless. That's profound. Profundity has no place in round number six. Profanity. No, there's plenty of profanity because we are doing Victorian slang. <laughs> so, again, I'm going to give you all the answers and then you've got to match up the Victorian slang with its definition. So here are the definitions. You ready? Bald head. Tight pants. Large nose, goatee beard, mouth, sausages, extravagance. <laughs> what was that? I don't know, but I was really struggling with sausages and you didn't call me. <laughs> <laughs> Poor quality meat, drunk. I wish I was. Policeman. Yeah. So there's all your possible possibilities. The things. So, Victorian slang, you ready? Door knocker. What's a door knocker? What is... That's number one. Number two, what is bags of mystery? Number three, half, half and half. Number four, butter upon bacon. Number five is a fly rink. Hmm? That's revolting. <laughs> it does sound revolting, doesn't it? That's really, like, I feel like that's an outback term. Uh, sauce box. That could also be revolting. A parish pickaxe. Very Raskolnikov. Mutton shunter. That's, that could be dirty too. Bow wow mutton. Not so dirty. And number 10 is gas pipes. Definitely dirty. Only in your house. <laughs> I think everybody's gas pipe is a bit dirty. All right, that's all the questions. We're not going to give you the answers, bye. No, <laughs> um, no we're going to start from round one, aren't we? Yeah, let's go all the way back. So to if you haven't, one. you know, if you want to take a moment and pause and go back and... So you Just get the most possible points. 
then you're a bigger nerd than me. But we're about to do the answers. Anybody need a repeat of any questions? No? Good. While we've got you here waiting for the answers, I will say like, comment, and subscribe. Yes. But Nietzsche knows. Um, yeah. So, and let us know how many you got once In you the... know the answers. Yes. Once you do your maths. If you're bad at maths, you might get a few extra. Uh, Alice in Wonderland was written by Lewis Carroll. Bram Stoker is the author of Dracula. Anne Bronte is the order of, author of Agnes Grey. Adam Bede was written by George Eliot. Wilkie Collins wrote The Wo Woman in White. And The Last Chronicles of Barset was Anthony Trollope. So we're doing our covers. Our cupcake covers. Number one. Sherlock Holmes. Number two was Wuthering Heights. You, your hands are loud. Number three, Oliver Twist. And if you didn't get that one, really? Number four, a bit trickier, Return of the Native. I didn't get that one, and I really like that book. Yeah. Number five, Daniel Deronda. And number six, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Dun, dun, dun. That is the Victorian Cupcake Round. Right. So for those of you who didn't know, the authors of those books... Oh... So, uh, the start is Arthur Conan Doyle. Yes. And, and then and Emily Bronte. And then Charles, Charles Dickens, Dickens. And then a little bit of Hardy. Thomas Hardy. George Eliot. And Robert Louis Stevenson. So, you can have double points if you've got title and author. All right. I didn't offer anybody title and author for these. But every one of these is a book. So I could have. <laughs> um, Michael Henchard sells his wife in The Mayor of Casterbridge. And he's a twat. He's a twat. That is another Hardy novel. Um, Basil and Henry are friends of Dorian Gray. Um, Dickens's novel in the French Revolution is A Tale of Two Cities. Amelia Sedley is a character from Vanity Fair. Mr. Earnshaw, Mr. Lockwood, and Nellie Dean are Wuthering Heights characters. That's like, because we didn't check, we've just reused the same things. I think I've even reused the same things without checking. Uh, Ricky Tiki Tarby is a character in The Jungle Book. Now, we're doing our Queen Victoria. You stole it! The quote. Quote number one, I don't dislike blank, though I think the very young ones are rather disgusting. Frenchman. Not on the list. Oh. <clears throat> Alberts. It wasn't Alberts. It is, I don't dislike babies, though I think very young ones rather disgusting. She was an interesting lady. Well, they do need to have their nappies changed. Well, they cry a fuck ton when they're first born. I, I don't know if she's wrong. She might be right. Question two. <clears throat> I would venture to warn against too great an intimacy with blank, as it is very seductive and a little dangerous. Cabbages. <laughs> artists. I would venture to warn against too great an intimacy with artists, as it is very seductive and a little dangerous. That could have been really, like, devious if it was the true God. <laughs> She wasn't quite that wild, I don't think. <laughs> I don't think, no. Um, Imagine a queen that's an atheist. That'd be scary. Mm. No, it wouldn't. It'd be awesome, but interesting. Go. Uh, nothing will turn a man's home into a castle more quickly and effectively than a suffragette, is what I wish the answer was, <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> nothing will turn a man's home into a castle more quickly and effectively than a dashend. Or an Elbert. On oh, Albert. <laughs> England has become a great and happy by the knowledge of Dash Hounds. Cabbages? 
fox hunting. The true god. <laughs> Number five was supposed to be my dearest dear Albert sat on a footstool by my side and his excessive love and affection gave me feelings of heavenly love and happiness I never could have hoped to have felt before. My dearest dear artist, baby, suffragette, true God, they all fit. They do all fit, but it was Albert. They loved each other. So cute. That blank accounts for the supremacy of England. That suffragette. That cabbage. It was that book, isn't it? It was. <laughs> what? You forgot the answer to your own question for a second. That book being the Bible, I would assume. Yes. Does it? Go Does round. It? My round. I am no bird and no net ensnares me. I am a free human being with an independent will is Jane Eyre. Bye. Oh, yeah, by Charlotte Bronte. Mm -hmm. The books that the world calls immortal are books that show the world its own shame. Immoral. And who wrote this? You say immortal every time you read it, so you clearly stuck a T in there. Look, I did. Look. You did. I did. That says immortal. Man, that's that's not my that's, that's not actually my, my ability to describe things. Yes. That is the picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde. And of course, men know best about everything, except what women know better. Is George Eliot and Middlemarch. Mm. A strong woman who recklessly throws away her strength. She is worse than a weak woman who has never had any strength to throw away. That's Tessa the D'Urbervilles. By Thomas Hardy. Thomas Hardy. Why, sometimes I believe as many as six impossible things before breakfast. It's Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. Mm -hmm. Also, if you got the first question right, which was who wrote Alice in Wonderland... Then you And you points. got that one wrong. You, you, yeah. Something wrong with you. Loyalty and obedience to wisdom and justice are fine, but it is still finer to defy arbitrary power, unjust and cruelty used, not on behalf of ourselves, but on behalf of others more helpless. That is Elizabeth Gaskell and North and South. That was long. It was a good quote. I nearly fell asleep. <sighs> Shouldn't be falling asleep. Victorian slang. An half, half, and half. If you're half, half, and half, you're drunk. If you've got a door knocker, you have a goatee beard. I think that makes sense because you grab the bottom and you like punch their teeth. I think I'm doing these out of order and I'm sorry. Uh, bags of mystery. Uh, sausages. Again, because you don't know what they put in them. Butter upon bacon is an extravagance. A fly rink is a ball dead. Gas pipes, tight pants. Bow wow mutton is poor quality meat, with the idea being that it might be a wolf up. A mutton shunter, however, is a policeman. One, three, one, two. A parish pickaxe is a big schnoz. <laughs> yeah, like yours. <laughs> <laughs> and a sauce box is a mouth. That's it. How many did you get? What was your score? Tell me. Did you win? How many? What was your favourite round? Let us know. Yes. All right. Like, comment, subscribe. We've been Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. And you had a great time. 
You probably did. That's why you should like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.